Hi guys, in this video I'm going to look at the new version of the Elicus Maker A3 Pro laser engraver. I'm testing the 2500 milliwatt version and it currently costs around £175 or $240 from Banggood. It can engrave several different types of material and in some cases it can cut them and I'll be testing that later on in the video. The engraver is supplied in kit form, but don't let that put you off, it's pretty easy to build. And this is what you get in the box. The frame is made from several sections of extruded aluminium profile or rails, a pack of clear acrylic cutouts, three stepper motors, a drive belt, power supply which is rated for 100 to 240 volts, and as a figure eight C8 inlet stroke C7 plug, an aluminium holder for the laser module, a hardware pack, the laser module, and the controller, which is based around an Arduino Nano type clone and stepper drivers. And last but not least, safety glasses. This laser is class four and easily capable of instantly and permanently destroying your eyesight and burning skin. A little card gives you the web addresses for the online instructions and also a forum. The instructions are okay, just enough to get the kit built, but with some guesswork. The old instructions are in the IKEA style and the new version are in the form of photos with captions and I ended up referring to both. The difference between the old version and the new version of the engraver seems to be the way that the frame corners are connected and also the mounting position of the controller. So let's have a look at how to build it and then we can also have a look at what it can do. To start with I built the two sides that form the Y axis. The belt tensioners were screwed together. A stepper motor was screwed onto one of the mounting plates. The pulley was placed onto the stepper motor drive shaft and secured by tightening the Allen screws. The wheels were then added to the mounting plate using plastic spacers and secured with flange nuts. And then the cut ends of the aluminium profile were deburred with a fine file and cleaned to remove any sharp edges and debris. The assembly was slid onto the rail and adjusted to remove any play. The drive belt was installed. And secured with one of the belt tensioners. The position of the pulley was adjusted and the belt tightened and secured by a second tensioner. And that whole process was then repeated for the second side. Next I built the gantry that forms the X axis. The third stepper motor was bolted onto an acrylic mounting plate. Then the pulley was fitted onto the drive shaft. The retaining screws for the laser were fitted into the laser mounting plate. And then the laser mount was screwed to another acrylic plate. Screws and spacers were fitted to the acrylic plate. Followed by the wheels. And another set of spacers. The two acrylic plates were fitted together and secured with flange nuts. The assembly was slid onto the rail and adjusted to give a zero play fit. The position of the pulley was adjusted, the belt was secured with a belt tensioner, then threaded through the motor assembly and secured with another belt tensioner. Next was the front and the back of the frame, which consisted of fitting the four acrylic corners, and then the rubber feet. The sides were screwed to the front and back, and then the gantry was screwed in position. The covers for the PCBs were screwed on using plastic spacers and metal standoffs. The 
Then the PCB case was fitted to the frame. And the cables plugged into the stepper motors. I think this is the way that the cables were intended to be routed, but ultimately I just left mine trailing free. The laser module was then fitted into the holder. Cable installed. The cable tidy wrapped around the overhead cables. The software for the engraver is called LXCAM and it's downloaded from the LXMaker website. And you also need to install a CH340 driver which you can find from this menu on the LXCAM software. Next the USB cable is plugged in and the COM port selected by clicking this button. Then we enter the setup menu, select machine and laser mode. The laser power level can be set here, the maximum is 1000 and I normally just leave it at that. To set the orientation of the engraving select config and select YREV to engrave what you see on the screen rather than a mirror image. Before going much further it's a good idea to put something down underneath the laser so that we don't burn the tabletop and the laser generates smoke and fumes so some sort of extraction is essential. For the moment I'm just using a shop vac that is vented externally but ultimately I'm going to build a ventilated cabinet. Before plugging in the power supply we need to put on the safety glasses then we can focus the laser using the weak power mode turning the adjustment ring to bring the laser to a sharp point. Now we can try out engraving with pick carve. There is a gallery with some pre-installed artwork. Then going back to control we can set the home or the starting position for the laser and hit preview to see an outline of where the laser is going to cut. And when we're happy with all of that we can press start. So this was my first ever engraving and where I learnt the need for fume extraction. We can also engrave text. Select the speed and the height, the carving speed, the carving mode and the font. Then we can preview where it's going to engrave. And if we're happy with that, start the engraving. The other thing that you can do is load G code that was created in an external application. And this is engraving the back of a glass mirror tile. Which works really well with edge lighting. So some of the other things that I've tried. The 2mm plywood that came with the kit, that cuts really easily. So did some 3mm plywood that I got from my local hobby craft store black foam board cuts really easily and so does black one and a half millimeter ABS sheet but apparently that gives off cyanide so maybe that's not such a good idea. I used Maker Case and Inkscape to create a box from six millimeter corrugated cardboard and I also had a go at etching a brass sheet by spraying it matte black, burning off the text with a laser and then putting it into sodium persulfate etching solution. The same process also works for making printed circuit boards. Overall I'm very happy with this engraver. It has increased my workshop capabilities allowing me to do things I couldn't do before and it's also a lot of fun to use. It can cut some thin materials less than three millimeters or one eighth of an inch thick but it does take quite a few passes so I wouldn't recommend it for just that. The software is not brilliant but it does enough to get you started and allows you to send G-code from external applications. 
and ultimately you can just replace it with some of the excellent open source software available. So I hope that was useful, thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.